Well, hello, hello, good morning, everybody. You can't see me yet because I'm not on the screen yet, but I will be. Here we go, okay. <laughs> we can't have technical difficulties this early in the morning, that's not good. Ladies and gentlemen, I am just tickled, just thrilled that you all are here watching this live stream. It is a first for me because today is the first day I actually get to meet the man, the myth, the legend, <laughs> Hunter McFadden. You hear him laughing, right? Hunter McFadden face to face. Uh, we've talked over the phone a number of times. We have um, communicated via email on occasion. And I got to say, you know, shaking his hand and just getting the opportunity to talk to him is, is excellent. And I'm so excited. But let me, let me not take up too much of the time, right? Because you're not here for me. You're not here to see me talk and to hear me talk. You want to hear from the expert in the field. And uh, his name is Hunter McFadden. So, Hunter, welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. I keep saying that I'm going to get this sound effect every single show. I keep saying <laughs> I'm going to hit a button it's, and it's going to play cheers, it. Right? right. And I just I keep it just doesn't happen. So, you know what? I'm not going to say it anymore until <laughs> it, I'm just going to do this. This is probably better anyway. That's all right. <laughs> so, you know, I've. What is, I feel like it's Christmas time. I'm just that excited. I, I know that's kind of crazy, but I, I wanted to ask you a question Yeah. before we get started. And the question is, do you play fantasy football? <laughs> Actually, no. Okay. I don't, but I know, <laughs> I know the game. <laughs> okay, so no fantasy football for you. If anybody out there does fantasy football, you please put it in the chat because um, I have to say I'm 4-1 in my, in my league. I would be losing right <laughs> um, just because of, of who I like. I like the Saints. I like the Steelers. I think I'd just be losing. Now, that see, listen to that, right? You thought we were going to come on here talking about your online identity, and here we're talking about the Saints and Steelers. Why the Steelers? Can I ask that question? Well, they're my, they're my fallback, but uh, fallback. I also married a Steelers fan. Is that right? Yes. So, uh, you know, it's, she, her Saints are her fallback. But Steelers are her primary. There can only be one but real black and gold team. I, I get it. <laughs> Steelers aren't black and gold. Oh, black and yellow? Is yeah. That? Oh. Mm. Hmm. Okay. See, black and gold. <laughs> Saints, man. Saints all the way. <laughs> well, well, we'll get off that. You know, the thing I thought about, though, as I was driving over this morning, I said, you know what? I have this fantasy football team. I'm 4-1. and one. I'm second in my league. Uh, best start I've ever had, right? I'm feeling good about things, but I realized one thing. In mm. order to access all that, you gotta I, get online. I have to get online, right? I mean, there's no other way, right? I can't do it by account. myself. Right, exactly. So, and, and I know that's what we're talking about. But before we get into that, mm -hmm. let me let you introduce yourself officially. Tell sure. everybody who you are and what company you represent and, and what you guys do. Yeah, so I'm Hunter McFadden. I'm the CEO of a local company here called Green Cube. Uh, we do IT cloud services. Uh, we do that predominantly over the Gulf South, but we have clients actually nationwide. Um, and we secure people's information in, in the cloud, and we make sure all of that is buttoned down, secure. You can't get access to it unless you, you know, have your user ID, password, and uh, some kind of multi-factor authentication, which we're actually going to get into uh, about how to secure your online identity. Oh, yeah, multi-factor authentication. That's kind of a... That's a that's a tricky one right there. I feel like uh, I, I had an experience with that, and I wasn't quite sure what I was seeing. But I guess mm -hmm. we'll get into that a little bit later. Yep. But that's that's a that's a ton of good stuff to talk about. You know, speaking of online accounts and uh, and that sort, online persona. Yeah. What's in a name? I like to ask this question uh, for our guests. You represent the company Green Cube. Yes. Why? Where did that name come from? Do we have an, an answer for that? <laughs> so, yeah, we uh, kind of spitballing ideas with a friend of mine. Uh, he actually owns a local marketing company here uh, in town. And we were just, you know, Charles Fry. He owns um, Studio 9017. A little plug-in for him. But uh, he and I were sitting over coffee one time just uh you know, he's asking, hey, what do you, you know, what do you do? And I was kind of going over, hey, we're doing uh, desktop as a service, remote desktop access uh, in the cloud. And, you know, really trying to, you know, take the power consumption away from, you know, the the company and put the, the computing power, you know, in the cloud. 
I see. So a lot of it centered around, you know, kind of going green. <laughs> 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 and uh, and the cube coming from cubicles, you know, making the cubicle green. But it just kind of just, the green cube just stuck in that conversation. It's like, oh, that's a pretty co- cool name. But, uh, yeah, the um, if, in case you're wondering why there's a Q instead of a C, um, it has to do with branding. You know, we couldn't get the domain name green Q-U-B-E. We had to get we, C-U-B-E, we had to go with Q-U-B-E and be a little cute. Hey, <laughs> necessity is the mother of invention. I mean, th- so all you guys out there, guys and gals, that are thinking about going into business, right, you want to own your own business, you want to be mm-hmm. an entrepreneur, you know, sometimes when life throws you lemons, okay, <laughs> you make lemonade, right? right? But, I mean, everybody knows that. But, uh, so, yeah, good deal, good deal. So. We're, let's get down to the nitty gritty. What we're here to talk about, by the way, uh, shout out to the 49ers fan in the audience. Yes, Julie Salter, thank you so much for saying that, and thank you do, so much do, for. Are they us. still playing? Oh. <laughs> um, I'm not. I'm not going to get into that <laughs> because I feel like somebody's going to. Sorry. Out. Somebody's going to come <laughs> through the live stream and completely. Okay, no, we can't. We can't make enemies here. Oh, I apologize. I, I couldn't resist. So. <laughs> Start hey, look, look, the Saints are just, you know, when you got a bad team, everybody's bad. <laughs> All right, anyway, this, is, this is not a football I podcast. I know, this is not a football <laughs> podcast. This is supposed to be about cybersecurity. Uh, you're not here to laugh at us. We're not here to laugh at you. Okay, here we go. Uh, hopefully, we'll teach you something. <laughs> we will teach you something now. Starting now at 9.07 a.m., we're going to teach you something. Okay, Hunter, talk to us about securing yourself online. Talk to us about strong passwords and all the things that I know you have to engage us. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, the strong password thing, and you know, I know a lot of people will say, Hey, you know, you got to have this, you know, massive password, 20 characters, whatever it is. Um, you know, and if you look at the vulnerability of about passwords, it's really interesting. There was some statistics done. The most hacked passwords are actually one, two, three, four, five, six. And password one. And people still use that. It's crazy. Password one? Yeah, password one. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. Okay, y'all, don't do that. Like like 60, <laughs> 60%. And, you know, and then most, and then a lot of people will use, you know, their kid's name with a birthday or whatever. Well, you got to understand, a lot of that's public record. So, in other words, things that are easy to find. Dictionary hackable or, or you know, public record. Can you, okay, hold on. See, time out. Yeah. We got some jargon going. So dictionary hackable. Yeah. Can you can you explain to those that may not know what that means, even though it might seem obvious? What does that actually mean? Well, it means that the the word is an actual word, right? Um, so you might use Alice Forty Niners. You might use that as your password. You might use Joe Montana as your password if you're Forty Niners fan or Steve Young. Um, since that point, I'm not sure you're. You know, we'll we'll see. Uh, but anyway, I think they got a decent quarterback right now. But again, <laughs> not football. This is supposed to be cybersecurity. Uh, passwords. It? So don't use don't use normal names. Don't use dictionary words as your password. In fact, I, I highly recommend pass phrases and not passwords. Um, they say statistically speaking, if you have twelve characters or more in your password, the likelihood of it getting hacked is exponentially increases the more you have so right at that 12 character line it starts really kind of curving up as far as the the likelihood of it getting hacked or the the strength of the password so if you have 13 14 15 characters you're explanation more complicated than a 12 character password so i'm going to interrupt you right there so i see a lot of us laymen out there mm-hmm. we get it get upset you know, we have to log in or create an account, and yeah. it used to be eight characters long was was the deal, right? You, you oh, do yeah. eight characters, you're fine. And then uh, lately, as you create new accounts, it's 12 characters. Mm-hmm. It may even be 16 characters. And, you know, we'd like to get upset. Right. Because we're like, oh, how am I going to remember this? What am I going to – we make up all these excuses, but you're saying it's exponentially more difficult to hack brute force, dictionary attack, yes. whatever, anything above 12 can you explain why that is? Like, why is it harder to hack it? I mean, well, tw- 12, 12 is a tipping point, right? So you, you've got iterations and uh, you end up locking out the account before you actually hack the password, mm-hmm. you know, for, in most cases. Locking out the account. Okay. So, but, you know, at, at the same token, 
um, if if you a lot of people you know will use still use passwords or they'll use something that's very relatively simple like one two three four five six one two three four five six I've actually seen that don't do that please so you're don't saying do don't double up on the password no okay <laughs> <laughs> you know but you know and I'm not a big proponent of like random password generators either um, because it makes it super complicated for you to remember what it is right so uh, if you're going to use a password that you want to remember, make sure it's a pass phrase. And what I mean by that is like, um, you know, let, let's just say uh, the 49ers won the Super Bowl in, in, I don't know, 49ers fan, when they last win the Super Bowl, I have no clue. It's, it's been a long time. She'll, she'll post it eventually. But. 1996, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. But let's say, you know, maybe your password is the 49ers won in – Super Bowl 23. Um, and I'm not a football history buff, so excuse me if, if I mess that up. But let's say that that's your, your past phrase, right? That's a phrase. It's a sentence. It's not just a single word. And so it makes it a little harder to actually guess or to hack, um, you know, especially if you put, you know, the spaces in between the words. You substitute some, char- some uh, letters for characters, and you put some other special characters in there. And voila, you've got a complicated password that you can remember. See, that's interesting because you said spaces in between the words. Those yeah. count. Those are, legit those are characters. legitimate characters. Well, we hope in most cases. Now, here's a question. If you have a long passphrase that may be 32 char- characters long or something like that, I would assume that there are some uh, services that there's a limit to yes. how long your password yeah, can be. I've actually it, seen how that. How common is that? <laughs> I mean, it's it, very common. There's actually some banking uh, websites that don't like – but certain special characters, and they won't let you use spaces. They will only let you use like an ampersand, a percent sign, uh, maybe a question mark. They won't even let you use a, an exclamation point. So the, you have to look at what the limitations are. Um, and some of them actually limit you to 20 characters, uh, which my, my point of view is, is now you've got a known quantity, like there's a limit. And so if I'm a hacker, I'm like, oh, this site – limits their passwords to 20 characters, ha, huh, I don't have to guess anything past that. It makes it actually easier to hack. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, there there are some things like that, but hopefully those sites that you're logging into that, that require that also require what we call a runtime passcode or multi, some, some form of multi-factor. So, like, they're sending you a text message or calling you with a code and saying, hey, put this code in. So that's what we call a one-time passcode word or a passcode it only lasts for so long it actually has times out right so you know a lot of banking sites do that they'll send you a text message or hey put this code in hopefully they're securing that so here's a question for you convenience Mm -hmm. now i see all the time folks have their laptop or their personal device and they like to save their passwords to that device um and i mean what i mean is you know it there's a cookie or something on there it keeps their login information Mm -hmm. um through google chrome or or, uh, at microsoft edge what are your thoughts on on the saving of credentials on your personal computer or your personal computing device so the uh, they're supposed to be encrypted they're supposed to be only accessible by you um and so a lot of times you have to have logged in uh you've logged into the the browser uh Particularly, I like something that's a little stronger, like a LastPass or a Password Boss or some other uh, password plugin. But the browsers aren't bad. They're actually a good place to start if you don't have anything other mm-hmm. than a sheet of paper. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> or your brain, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're not good at remembering them. Um, and they've gotten better. Uh, you know, Google Chrome and um, Edge and, you know, Safari does it as well. If you look on, you know, if you look on your mobile device, uh, you've got passwords stored there. They're actually going to tell you in the list, hey, this password's been compromised or this is a weak password or, hey, you may want to change this password and at least give you give you some ideas. Hey, look, I need to go change that password because it was hacked. Uh, not necessarily hacked, but it's been identified as a weak password or a password that's been exposed somewhere on the dark web. 
the, the, dark, the dark web. web. <laughs> yeah. That's a spooky place. It is. I would ask, how do we get to the dark web? But that's for a whole nother conversation. Well, we probably you know, don't want to go there, actually. Bring a flashlight. <laughs> bring a <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Hunter McFadden, <laughs> comedian extraordinaire. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs> Look, I'm here all day. I got dad jokes galore. You know, I got I got three girls. So you know, hey, oh if, if if they spit out, it's just because I'm and just Look, clicking with them. So so we'll pause for a second. I do want to recognize uh, some of the folks that joined us today, uh, Miss Sharonda Bridges and the High Set class. I hope y'all are cheering in there because uh, we really appreciate y'all joining us. I don't know how many it is. If y'all could put in the chat, how many are y'all actually deep in that classroom right now? 20, 30, I'm assuming at least. Thank y'all for tuning in. Uh, we have Xavier Edwards, who's also joining us. I'm sure there's some others that haven't put anything in the chat or names that I don't recognize uh, based on the username. But thank y'all for being here. We really appreciate it. So now, Mr. McFadden, mm -hmm. Mr. Dad Joke, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Steelers fan, right? Okay. <laughs> Saints fan first. Right. Saints right. fan. It, Saints. Gotcha. First and foremost, good deal. Yes. By the way, the, the last time the uh, Niners won, oh, we got lights oh. messing up in here. Hold on. This is, li this is live. This is what happens when you oh, go live. Oh, this is interesting. Okay. We have motion detectors. <laughs> I guess we're not moving around enough. So, uh, Hey, I looked darker a while ago. I actually look tan. I'm, I'm washed out with this well, light. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, we'll, we'll do better next time. <laughs> so uh, Julie did put in the chat, 1994 was the last time they, the 49ers won, just saying we'll get off the Hey, 49ers. I was close, 96. Right. Exactly, exactly. Uh, two close years enough. off. You were giving them some time. Steve Young. You mentioned, so we'll get back on track. You mentioned <laughs> LastPass. Yes. And these, and Password Boss. Mm -hmm. Tell us, what are they exactly supposed to do for those that don't know or may have heard of them? Yeah. So they'll actually, so number one, to access Password Boss or LastPass or the ones that are like that, <clears throat> and make sure that they do this because there are some that don't. Um, it's an online credentialing uh, cache, so you can, you're storing your all your credentials encrypted. It's fully encrypted. Um, in fact, it's multi-factor authentication protected. You usually have to do. Um, they'll send you a push notification on your phone if you have the app installed on your phone. You say, "Yeah, let me in." Um, but in a lot of cases, they'll fill in the, the credentials for you to your banking website or whatever the website, and they'll store the passwords and the one-time passcodes and stuff like that. And to be able to access it, it prompts you on your phone, hey, you're, you know, I see you're wanting to get into your bank account. Are you, are you okay with that? And you click OK, and it fills in the credentials for you. Um, so therefore, you don't have to remember it. The pro and it stores it, so if you actually have to recall it, you can actually look at it. It's not like it's it's totally hidden from you. Mm -hmm. um, but when you get prompted for a password change, it will actually change it for you and say, "Hey, we're suggesting this complex password that you'll never remember and you'll never recall, mm -hmm. and you're going to have to look at the type." <laughs> but that's why you have the credential manager f so that it actually pops that in there, and yeah, you don't have to worry about having a pack. You know, it is a randomized password. I'm not, again, you're not going to remember that. So I'm not a proponent for that for remembering. However, when in, it coupled with a last pass or a password boss type of application, yeah, go ahead and let it random, randomly generate it. Okay. Now, do these, do these services cost money? Excuse me. Um, I would pay for it. <laughs> so, so, see, here's, 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 there. here's, here's the thing, you know, there are free services, like there's free antivirus out there. Okay. And being a computer guy, I say, stay away from the free antivirus, pay for it. You're going to pay for what you get. Okay. And if it's free, guess what? There's, it, it, I was always told that there's nothing ever free. So like when you're on Facebook or you're on LinkedIn or whatever, and you've got a free account there, you're not paying for anything you're maybe not paying monetarily, but you're you're giving up something to have that, whether it's your you know some form of your information or or whatever. So if you're using free antivirus, who knows what they're actually collecting for you on your behalf? Um, it's kind of like uh, there was a uh, a browser that we found that was malicious called Wave Browser. So if you just to 
shout out if you're using Wave Browser, get it off your computer. Um, it, it was actually sending information back to the Chinese. So just be careful. It's, you know, that's, that's what you get for when you don't pay for something. And then also do your due diligence. Check out the company. You know, last pass, yeah, they, you know, I think they're owned on, on, on by LogMeIn. Yeah, if I remember right. right. Mm-hmm. Did they get hacked? Yeah, they got hacked, but none of their passwords were actually compromised because they were all encrypted. So do the research, but also understand that hey, it's not a it's not a matter of if somebody's going to get hacked. It's a matter of when. LinkedIn's been hacked. Facebook's been hacked. All the all the platforms that you're probably on today have been hacked. Huh. Okay, a lot to think about there. Before we move on to the next segment, I wanted to say this. Just in case you didn't know where the broadcast originates, this comes from LDCC Monroe, so Louisiana, the campus of Louisiana Delta Community College in Monroe. And we're in room 310, the theater, uh, for right now. Now, there's a class coming in here uh, at 11 o'clock, but, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, but we're here. If you want to come up, it's okay. Uh, you are welcome to come to the theater for uh, the next, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes while we're here and ask questions. You can meet uh, Hunter McFadden right after we, we finish this. And also, I wanted to show you something on camera. This is why I really stopped. I, he brought some things. Now, he didn't bring a lot. So, um, you know, I mean, don't expect everybody to get one of these if you're on campus. But if you have the time, you want to come up and visit in room 310, the theater. Um, during the, the broadcast, is fine. You can come in. We have seats for you. Mr. McFadden brought a couple of green cube cups, which are actually quite nice. These are, let me get this on camera right. It, it's, they're silicon. They're silicon. They, they squeeze it. It's a really nice feel to it. I really like these. So we have a couple of these. And, uh, and I'll hopefully, uh, I'm sure these will be gone by the time the day is over, so I'll ask you to bring a couple more. If you <laughs> <laughs> Just we so have I can some. have one. And then um, we also have these lanyards. So I know everybody, uh, especially students, like to sometimes wear their ID um, on a lanyard. So here we go, a green cube lanyard. And oh, uh, I've, I've got a bag full of those. So if you want to hand them off to all your students, I will bring you back more of those. Okay, so we have tons of these, <coughs> right? But m- only about six or so in the room, but, you know, I can get more. <laughs> so anyway, you probably couldn't see that because I know it's a bit washed out on the, the camera. But anyway, letting you know, inviting you up here to room 310 if you want to come, the theater room. And uh, we're happy to have you as we transition into the next segment. And Hunter's like, what's the next segment? I, I wanted, <laughs> <laughs> right, this is unscripted. So the qu- I wanted to talk a little bit more about That's two-factor obvious. authentication for a second. Um, again, sometimes people think it's a bother, you know, to have additional ways to authenticate because they feel like, well, my password should be enough or I, I, this is memorized in my, in my phone or in my browser, so why do I have to do something else? All we want is access to the services, yes. right? And we, we discount the, the access to um, the service securely Mm -hmm. right um i know on some of my accounts i I have two-factor authentication in the form of either a text message or it may come through google authenticator or microsoft authenticator um i even have one account that asks me another question after that which is a special question that i can choose to turn on or off but it's like i have to go through three different stages for those that are it aficionados yeah security like that it's something that you know, something that you are, something that you have. Can you walk us through some of that? Or do you, I don't know if that's too yeah, much for so this conversation, but <coughs> just want to make sure we get that technical piece down yeah. for those that are in the IT. Programs. So mo- most, most sites secure it with what's called an OTP or one-time passcode. And that's the text message code. Or if you have um, like the Google Authenticator, Microsoft Authenticator, I personally use Duo. Um, a lot of these other ones will, you know, you scan a QR code and it has a random number generator is what it is basically what it is um rsa tokens were one of the first ones that i remember seeing that you had it carried around in your pocket it was actually a little usb fob type of thing but at any rate it's um again it expires in 30 seconds those are the most common but when you get down to multi-factor authentication uh you know true uh, full context and it, it really comes down or has come down to what I just said, contextual authentication. Mm, So it's a matter of not just, hey, it's what do you know, because you know your password, right? But the who you are could be 
a you know a fingerprint. It could be facial recognition. So a lot of these are you know we tend to secure some of our um, authentication pieces where you know it does a, a push to your phone, but the phone now has to recognize, hey, is this actually you hitting the button on the phone? So it actually looks at your face ID or does a fingerprint ID. So now you have biometrics. But also a lot of these are, it's, it's where you are. Oh. It's not just who you are, what you know now. It's where are you? What device are you using? Is it a trusted device, untrusted device, public device? So now we're talking about context awareness to be able to go, hey, how many levels of authentication do we want to present you based on your geographic location, what device you're using, um, so on and so forth. Are you connected to a public Wi-Fi, an encrypted Wi-Fi? Are you coming over the VPN first? You know, so there's a lot of different security contexts that companies are now looking at and looking for to be able to then go, hey, yeah, this is Ryan Pierce logging in for Louisiana Delta Community College. Do you think that all of that is going to deter a hacker? Probably not. Have we seen some times or some instances in cybersecurity where even with some of the best encryption or, or, or two-factor authentication or all those things that compromises still happen? Oh, absolutely. So just for example, um, this is probably – more rampant than what you think, but okay, somebody's having a problem with a making website. One, you have to look at it and go, hey, are they actually lo- are you actually logging into your bank's website? Mm. You know, banks. Yeah, that's that's always tricky. But I mean, literally, look at the URL. Legit. So if you put your pa- name, and username, password, and you get, hey, it's not good. Go check the URL first. Make sure you're actually logging into your bank's website. It, which sometimes is hard to see when you're on a mobile device. It's a little it bit easier when you're on a, it is. On, it's a, on a computer. Desktop, yeah. Use the apps. Usually the apps are the banking, the bank's app as opposed to the bank's website on your phone. Okay. It's a little more secure. However, like I said, a lot of people are like looking at that and they're going to a bogus website, entering credentials, and then what's being what's happening is is on the back side that hacker is now captured your credentials, they're posting the credentials on your website right now. Mm-hmm. They're going to respond back with, hey, we're asking for your one-time passcode. You're going to put it in. So a lot of that is occurring. Some of that just on the phone because, like, hey, we see that your account's been compromised or whatever. Please call us. You call, you're actually talking to the hacker. <laughs> or or, or their or their cronies. Talk about social you engineering know. a little bit there. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And there has been some other things. Um, I don't know. Have you, have you heard a guy named Mark Rober? He does a lot of YouTube stuff. He worked for NASA. Anyway, he's he's all about cap. You know, really getting to these hackers because he's he's mad at them. Oh, so he likes but, to play tricks on them. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He he reverse engineers a lot of stuff. <laughs> go, go go ahead, Mike Rober. R- Mark Mark Rober. R O B E R. Yeah, I think okay. I got the name right. But uh, anyway, he he does. Um, He's gonna get a thousand hits because. Oh of yeah, oh, yeah. This, <laughs> He's this right here. A million, a million. Uh, we're gonna put, we're gonna <laughs> we, really, we got his really career started this. here. Oh yeah, we did. No, not really. <laughs> but uh, he's you know a lot of the things that he's done has been the um, this you know people come by and grab boxes off his doorstep. So he's actually put oh. these trick boxes out that are you know uh, some kind of product that somebody wants, like a PlayStation or an oh. Xbox or whatever. They open up the box and it's a glitter bomb. So oh, I have seen, <laughs> no, I have seen a video. You've seen the like glitter that. bomb. Okay. He's got right. a camera inside. Yes, he's got a bunch of cameras. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. So, but he's he's actually done a couple of other things where he's uh, reverse social engineered the hacker and not, you know, kind of through that, but through some other means and exposed some people getting scammed for twenty, thirty, fifty thousand oh. dollars $50,000 of, of whatever. And it's it's interesting when you watch the video what, what they're doing. And so I highly recommend, you know, just don't don't stop here with just this conversation. Go dive, go dig deeper, go research some stuff, go watch some of these videos because it's very interesting and you, and you need the your awareness of what's happening will probably secure you more 
than what, you know, talking about passwords, <laughs> past phrases and all that. Just your awareness on social media, on, you know, on, being on the Internet, being online safely. That's an interesting point. So we, the human being, are still our best defense oh, absolutely. against being attacked or being compromised. Yes. Huh. So that be smart, everybody. Right. Be aware. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, they're playing on your lack of being informed. Right. So you can't fall asleep with the wheel. Keep up with the latest and greatest. OK, mm-hmm. so I feel like there were some other things you wanted to address with us, maybe something about uh, credit reports, credit scores or anything like that. Well, yeah. So in, I, I just I did a Google search. I'll be honest with you. And said, "Hey, what's what's the top things you need to do to secure your online identity?" Okay. You know, I'm not I'm not the whiz kid here. I'm just we just things that we look out for, right? We have, again, self education, self awareness, mm-hmm. being able to you know, hey, these are things I need to educate myself about. So, you know, one of the things that you know when you're talking about your online identity, and hey, is my identity being compromised? One place to look is your credit report. You know, who out there is actually submitting you know a credit check on you who is applying for credit in your name and stuff like that so when you look at that and you see these applications being sent and being hit on your on your on your credit report you now you know that there's some identity fraud going on and you need to take additional steps like getting a uh, maybe a experian involved experian actually offers a a um, identity um, what do you call it? Keeping yeah. your identity theft. Yeah. yeah, identity theft awareness I mean, alerts. So does LifeLock. There's plenty of other things out there, but even the even the the people who actually do the credit scoring offer the, those services. Okay, so so not only are we talking about now securing your online identity through you know like I have a Gmail account or I have my fantasy football account or anything like that, right? Now we're talking about securing basically your entire life through your credit report by doing those, uh, managing those services or taking advantage of those services. Absolutely. I mean, you got to think about it. You know, it's, it's not a matter of your life being in your wallet anymore. You know, your money is not just in your wallet. Your, your identity is not just on your driver's license. And even now, your driver's license, I don't know if, you, if you've if you got it, but living in Louisiana, we have the Louisiana you know, app now that we can have our driver's license right on our phone. That's true. Did y'all know yeah. that? We actually have folks coming in, in the room now. Thank yeah, we have a live here. audience. Ooh. It's like awesome. Yeah, if, if y'all cheer or something at some point, I mean, we'll actually hear. They'll pick up <laughs> on the mic. Okay, thank y'all for being here. So the you said, so I have my ID. I can now see that's actually interesting. My yeah. ID can be on my phone. I don't have to go to the DMV anymore. Nope. And, I mean, it's it's literally on your phone. How many of y'all actually take advantage of that? Can we ask questions? Yeah, you absolutely, absolutely can. That's that's why you're here. Oh, we got a question from the audience. Go for it. I don't feel like that's safe to have your ID on the phone because I feel like this happens. Okay, for those that that can't hear, a gentleman in the audience is saying, I, I I don't, I'm not quite sure if it's good to have your ID on your phone. You were about to say something else too. I'm sorry, I cut you off. Because I believe I believe it's like hackable. Cause, cause believe you, because because the phone's hackable. Well, here's the thing: where is it actually stored? Mm, good question. On whose on on whose computer? It, well, okay. So so we we're talking. So the questions and the concerns are about your driver's license being stored on your phone. And here's the thing: the phone is getting it from the DMV computer. So how safe is the DMV computer? I, if I remember correctly, and I don't remember the exact date, but the Louisiana government's been hacked. Mm-hmm. Okay, so. Oh yeah, we heard about that one. We studied that a little bit. Uh, we, we have some students that are actually tuning in via yeah, YouTube know. that that have yeah looked at I'm, that. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> trying to. I'm not trying to look. I'm not trying to point fingers or point you know pain points, but it's a, it needs to be a learning lesson, right? So it's it's not just a matter of you know hey can can your device get hacked? Yeah. Your device can get hacked. You could actually download a piece of uh, an app that is malicious on your phone that hasn't been caught by Apple yet or, or Google Play yet, to, and it's collecting information. And so that's why I tell my, you know, I've got a 13-year-old daughter. She's all the time asking for apps to go on her phone. And one thing I look at, uh, you know, in the app store is I look at, hey, what is being shared by this app? 
what is this app collecting off of my phone? What is it, you know, what kind of, what pieces of my identity is that app collecting? And then where is it putting it? Okay. So a lot of these things, you know, you're, you're absolutely right. And what's your name? Joseph. Joseph. So Joseph asked the question. He's absolutely right. Your device can get hacked. But, it's, you know, when, when you're concerned about is it safer on my phone or is it safer there, it's already there, right? Your driver's license is already on the DMV computer. Bingo. <laughs> Social media passwords? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So so one of the, one of the one of the biggest things there, I mean, obviously, you know, from a password hacking, that's not you're not really concerned about the password hacking. I mean somebody could hack your you know, your account, obviously. So you want to protect your, your social media account. The other piece of this, though, is how much of our personal information are we exposing? Oh, yeah. Exactly. So how much of, how much of me, how much of me, you know, my face, mm-hmm. how much of my story, how much of my background, how much of my personal information am I putting out on social media? If you follow me on LinkedIn or even on Facebook, you'll see very little personal information. Mm-hmm. You'll see my email address. You may see my, my phone number so you can get a hold of me. Mm-hmm. But the only way you get that is if you friend me. And I'm very cautious. Mm-hmm. Like if you go to link up with me on LinkedIn and you don't put, hey, here's how I know you. <laughs> here's how we met. The odds of me actually accepting your connection are slim to none. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, I mean, I, I get asked for connections probably five, six times a day just because of my title on LinkedIn. Yeah, people want to sell me stuff all day long and people want to, like, you know, there, there's other malicious, you know. And so, so, so basically so, I should be happy that I'm your LinkedIn <laughs> pal, right? LinkedIn, of course, the, so, the networking site for professionals. Yeah. Uh, I will not do a friend request for, uh, on Facebook, I, I I know better than that, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, Facebook's, you know, I I, de- I look, I kind of do the same thing on Facebook, like, um, so before I accept your friend request or I accept your connection on on LinkedIn, I'm gonna look and say, hey, how many people are you already connected with? Mm-hmm. Oh, you're only connected with five people. Brand new account, red flag. Mm-hmm. You yeah, know, that's true. I'm serious. It's it's a red flag. Okay, so that's public record. Yeah. It's already public record. Is what I'm saying. Is what I'm telling you. The fact that you're enrolled in Louisiana Delta Community College is public record. So if it's public record, go ahead. I mean, you can, you can you can put that out there. What I'm talking about is your personal information. Yeah. You know, the the, the fact that I have three girls is fairly public record. I mean, it, it, it is. I mean, you can you can you can go do a search and see, you know. It's public record. Okay, uh, yeah, so Let, let's let's clarify something for a second. Public record. Yes, yeah. we can look it up and see that you have daughters. Yes, but do 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 we know what they look like? No, no. I think that that's that's where the difference lies. Right? There, there's there's part of that. There's also, do you know their exact birth dates? Do you know their socials? Do you know their identities? You know how much of like, again, how much of my personal information am I exposing online? Mm-hmm. You know, it's like I I, I I teach my girls, and that don't post a picture by yourself, ever. Mm-hmm. Don't do it. There's no reason to. I mean, think about it. Guys, same thing. Why would you post just a picture of you, a selfie? All right. So when, you, when you're looking at that, it's, it's called being safe online. It's not that. I had a, a really good friend um, who was basically being blackmailed 
because they followed him on social media, got some pictures, doctored them, and sent them to him in a private message saying, I'm going to post these for you if you don't pay. So think about that, though. If they, depending on what he had posted, you know, maybe they couldn't have gotten everything or couldn't have gotten, you know, certain things to then doctor up another photo to make it look like something else, right? So be very careful. I just want to say don't ever post pictures by yourself. I, I typically don't. I try not to anyway. Yeah, not post a picture by yourself because, are you, I mean, are you saying that maybe the person wouldn't know easily if they were just a complete stranger who who you who, who Well, no, you just too, too much facial recognition on, on okay. even on social media for that. But it's just... I don't know. It's, that's probably a personal preference. Mm, okay. You know, maybe a personal thought process of like, hey, especially when I look at it from being a dad. Okay. Okay. Protecting my girls, right? And it's really advice for them. Hey, don't post something by, you know, just careful what you post. Trying to, phone. yeah. Post your group activities. Don't, don't, don't go post, hey, look at me, I'm wearing. My green cube shirt today. Oh, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Joseph. I, I totally agree with you. I don't have social media because I feel like that ain't nothing but a way for people to find out information about you mm -hmm. or find out how you look or find out your location if they want to do you something. So I don't believe in having a social media at all. Well, I can see that. I can see that. Now, now you know, so what's the purpose of social media, right? You know, what, why are you being social? Um, I'd rather be social with, with, I mean, I'm so glad you guys walked in here. I mean, Ryan and I are, are chit-chatting and, and having a good conversation, but the conversation gets better when I'm actually around people, right? So on social media, there's not really a conversation. You're not, there's no true connection on social media, right? So what's the purpose? Purpose is, you know, maybe it, it's, it's really... Okay, let's get down to Facebook. How does Facebook make money? Uh, no, they don't really sell your personal information. Now they're they're technically not selling your personal information. <laughs> now they are selling how you use their platform. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they're they're taking, you know, what you're doing where you are, and all that, and stripping your name off of it. Okay? So now, I may not know what you as an individual are doing, but the group that you're connected to, because you all act the same, it's called group dynamics, right? As a group, I can very easily predict what you're going to do. As an individual, no. As a group, yes. So how does Facebook make money? ads being able to advertise right so that's why i said earlier just because you have a free account doesn't really mean it's free you're giving up something so you know how does linkedin make money ads but they're they actually sell memberships so you know if you have a free account or a paid account i have a paid account oh yeah mm-hmm other thing and I put it in my saves and then it showed up on my Instagram like two days later. Oh, absolutely. And I kept on doing that, you know. It's, it's called like, cookies. Kind of weird, you know? It's called cookies. Yeah. yeah. Cookies are for advertising. They're not for, for helping you log into sites. Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Facebook like bought Instagram and stuff too. Oh, yeah. And Instagram, WhatsApp. Um, uh, like, I can't remember what else. Yeah. This for you. Oh, yeah. And like even if you press no, it'll still kind of do it in a while. Oh, yeah. So, so here, here's here's a here's an interesting thing, and and my wife and I have kind of kind of tested this. We'll have a conversation and then go immediately go to Facebook or Instagram and see what's what we get what ads we get blinged with. And it's some it's for the most part it's centered around the conversation we just had. And it's kind of like okay, how much are you listening to? You know, what kind of cookies are you actually storing? Yes, sir. What's your name? 
Pain? Yes, sir. I got a question. I want to know where your social security hold at. Like, where do they hold it? What now? I'm sorry. Where do they keep your social security at? Your number or everywhere? Everywhere. I mean, think about it. You had to. You have to use it for credit. You have to use it to open a bank account. You have to use it to uh, get a job. You have to use it. I mean, it's 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 everywhere. four digits of our social security card for yeah, our password. Don't you need that? Yeah, because it's like your identity and stuff too. Isn't it connected to your identity and stuff? Oh, yeah. And didn't like the IRS get hacked? Like, like yep. That's kind of scary. The that like these government yep. buildings are getting... You know, that's why it's so important to, you know, keep, keep um, you know, a, a credit, a credit score alert. You know, something, yeah. something monitoring your credit report. I'm 16 and my... Um, Someone tried to file taxes and with my social security number uh -huh. two months ago. I don't know how they got that, but they got that somehow. Mm -hmm. We don't we don't send that over text or anything. They must have got got it whenever they hacked the IRS. Uh -huh. And and didn't you get like something mailed to you from them? Yeah, from the IRS. Yeah. They told me I was getting hacked. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that yeah, my, my dad's my dad's got hacked and he now has to file with the special code. They actually they actually mail him a special code to file along with his, and it's, uh, so yeah, it's, it's real. Yep. I believe if the IRS can get hacked and the government could get hacked, anything could be hacked. Yeah, yeah. Anything, no, that's, anything that's, that's, that's absolutely correct. So, so I mean, right. Now, now the, the only dangerous part to this conversation is that you can get so fearful that you'll never be online again. Okay. No, I'm, I'm serious. You know, it, I mean, you can take it to the other extreme. So the, the whole idea is, hey, there are so much, there's so much good out of being connected online. There's so much good out of being able to use a computer. There's so much good out of, you know, because if you look at the progression of industry and how much we can accomplish today versus what we could just 20 years ago because of the Internet, because of computer, because of all of this stuff. It's just, hey, you you got to be aware, right? And so that's why we always promote to our clients security awareness training. You've got to be aware of what's going on, what's changing. you got to be able to adapt. And the social engineering aspect of hacking is probably the key part. It's not necessarily the, I'm going to go brute force hack something. Well, a lot of hackers know that that's, you know, there's not enough compute power, enough time to get it done if you're actually securing your passwords correctly. So now I've got to figure out, hey, how do I get that information anyway? And so it's going to be very social, you know, very much, you know, could be a, a text message on your phone, could be a, you know, somebody, you know, a, a call. And, you know, people are spoofing phone numbers now. You know, I, you know somebody called me back and said, hey, you just called me. and said, no, I didn't. And they, they spoofed my, my cell phone. So I'm saying Right. You know, they can hack into somebody and then send it to their friends, like who they're most interactive with. Because you can also see that on Instagram, who they're most most interactive with people oh, yeah. and stuff. And like that's kind of scary. It's called your digital trail, digital footprint. Digital, yeah, that's what yeah. It's all like you social media. To stay in contact with friends and family. Mm -hmm. I just follow them. And like also, you you can like find out events and stuff there, but that's mm -hmm. why you know. And some of that in like stuff that your favorite brand promotes and stuff like that. Yeah, it should be to help me connect with somebody, not keep me connected with somebody. Yeah. It's a big difference well, there. Uh, like family that don't live next to My anymore friend. and friends that have moved away. Mm -hmm. It's just so you can stay in contact with them. Yeah. Do we have any questions online? I th thought I saw something. Mm -hmm. Nope. No, okay. I have two questions. Go ahead, Joseph. 
The first one is, what's your take on putting your credit card and debit card information online? Well, like, you know, like, say for instance, I'm give on me the an web, example. Like, I'm on the website mm -hmm. shopping online. Yep. And it's not an official, official website like Walmart or something like that, but it's just a regular website shopping online for clothes. Can that be hacked? Look, anything can be hacked. But, I mean, Target got hacked via a back door into their POS system and, and somebody was collecting credit card swipes in store. Okay. Not online, in store. Okay. So, so, you know, again, this goes back to the awareness part. Where are you shopping? Who are you buying from? Where, what company is this? Where are they located? You know, I, I, I mean, I look at it, I go, like I was, I was doing some research on, on um, so, you know, a little technical, uh, DMARC is a is a form of email protection to it's it's basically saying hey this email originated from the company so it's another dns record um it's called d d m a r c and so this is not a discussion about that but i was going online to find out hey we do this for other people but it causes when we put that in place it causes reports to come back that we need to filter through well, if you're if you're the only tech in your company, and that's that that's that's great. We protect over five thousand users. We don't have the manpower to just go through everything. So I need a service. So we're looking at a service to help us implement D DMARC correctly. And so I went online and I started finding, hey, where are these services at? Who are they? And but before I ever buy anything from them, or before I ever fill out a form. I'm looking at, where's your company headquarters at? Who owns you? How do you transact? So when I, I do the same thing when I look at buying apparel online, and I'm old school, I like going to the store and trying it on. But hey, I get it. So, and I, and I have bought some things on, but again, who are you? Who am I transacting with, right? And so when you transact with a Walmart or you transact with an Amazon, those have to fall under what's called PCI compliance to protect your credit card or to protect your credit information. So at, at an understanding that I'm buying from a U.S.-based company, I know that they're falling underneath that PCI compliance. I'm okay with doing that. But I'm also looking at Mr. Credit Card right i'm not using my debit card I'm using my credit card why because they have extra protections that just in case that that gets compromised i'll get an alert get a notification they're calling me saying hey did you authorize such and such transaction for five thousand dollars no <laughs> you know so did you apply for this card well yeah i did um so that those sorts of things. So be careful. Not just don't use your debit card. Use a credit card. There's more protections there. So you know how you can buy like the uh, little Visa pay cards and stuff from like the Family Dollar and stuff. Yeah. Is it safer to put the exact amount of money on those cards and go shopping online with one of those cards? Yes. Mm -hmm. What about like Cash App cards and stuff? Like what do you like? What do you think? Are you putting stuff like that? Like PayPal. I know Cash App has, like, their own cards that they'll yeah. send out. Like, what do you think about those? Like, are they um, I like PayPal. I like Cash App. I like Venmo um, for, you know, certain transactions. Um, using their card mm -hmm. isn't going to be like using any other card. You know, at that, at that point, it is a form of a credit card or debit card. So there's, um, if, you, if you look at it, and I can't remember exactly how many people actually control that, those transactions. You need to go look it up, but like American Express, Visa, those those are the top two. And so even the PayPal card is probably going to end up with a Visa logo on it or something else on it, right? So again, the look at the protections around it. So you know, but like but like uh, Mr. Joseph said about a prepaid card. Hey, I know I'm going to um, buy something for. It's going to cost me 150 bucks. I go put 150 bucks on a prepaid card. Use that prepaid card. Oh, 
if it gets compromised, there's nothing else on it. buy something online they'll ask you if you want to save your information for like yeah. a faster checkout is that like what do you think about that like again there's the, again pci compliance stuff mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, so who do you trust you know whether they store it or whether or whether you're putting it in again mm -hmm. um if done right i would say the stored option may be more secure now there's some other people that are going to be way more technical on that than i am but, you know, if I had to think about it going, okay, well, what's the encryption piece of this? You know, just from an encryption standpoint, they're storing it encrypted. It's already on their system. It's not going over the wire. Okay, but if I enter it in, it's going over the wire, right? And, at some po and while I'm entering it in on my computer, that's not encrypted. It's only encrypted when I hit send. That's when it gets transmitted, okay? So as I'm as I'm typing it, that's not encrypted. Isn't that like the same thing as sending like like connecting your bank account to like Cash App or something? Yeah, I mean to a degree. Mm -hmm. But but I mean if you if you look at it, if I'm typing on a keyboard, there could be a key logger. This this is how some people have gotten hacked, right? Get an email, click on a link, all of a sudden there's a key logger on your on your computer. Well, guess what? If you go type your, your credit card information, that gets flagged. The key logger goes, hey, I have credit card information. Here you go, Mr. Hacker. Go charge something. All right, all right. Now, I feel like the conversation can just keep going on oh, and on could. because there's it a could. ton of things, ton of ways we're, we're exposed. Look, there, there's, there's, there's a recent thing in, you know, uh, some restaurants, people, you know, trying to add other people's debit cards to their cash app. You know, she's talking about Cash App. Right. You just added that, you know, customers going in, paying for something, the the waiter scanning the card, trying to add it to their Cash App. <laughs> well, gosh, it's been such a, a great conversation. Thank you all for coming to the room to ask the questions. That really, I think that really helped the conversation go even better than what I expected. So thank you all for being here. Uh, the high set uh, class, of Ms. Saranda Bridges, thank you so much for bringing them here. Thank you all for being here. Mr. Hunter McFadden, lots of great information. I mean, and like we just said, you know, this conversation could continue into infinity because there's so many places that we are vulnerable. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and so how about we make sure that we all stay in touch, right? Absolutely. I'll make sure. It, you'll give me the proper contact information for you yes. to share with the public so that then the conversation, conversation can keep going. All right. Did you have any last thoughts or any last words before we, because uh, well, our hour is almost up, have any last words for the viewing audience? Mm. No, or, just, or for just, the studio audience? <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> just, just keep your, your, you know, your, your awareness up. Keep your guard up. Um, I think we're fastly moving to what a lot of security people are calling zero trust uh, from that context. You know, again, going back to the contacts, you know, if you want to deep dive in on security stuff, there's plenty of other people that are experts in this. But, you know, look up zero trust. Kind of have a zero trust approach to doing business online to a degree. You know, vet them out, you know, just like you would vet out. You know, you're not just going to go, you know, if your friend asks you for $1,000 face to face, you're, you know, you're going to go, well, <laughs> what are you doing? So, but... Don't, you know, treat, treat the, you know, the online presence the same way. All right. And with that, we're going to conclude. This has been an extra special presentation from Louisiana Delta Community College, uh, our LDCC Cyber Month all through October. Thank you, Mr. Hunter McFadden. And we'll see you at the next event or on the next stream. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.